Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be doing um, builds for the Iron Horse Raid. I get asked all the time in our Discord, what builds do I use for each boss for the Iron Horse Raid? And that's what we're going to do. We're going to do a four part series showing you guys every build I do, running down every build, showing you everything that you need to know. Um, if you don't know, the GS GS rock discord the link is in the description of this video and uh, it's a great place to be we have about 10,000 members um, multiple clans ab across all three platforms that's a great place to be highly suggest it um, but without further ado let's get into the builds so in this video we're going to be going over uh, lieutenant gray and the uh, just add phase in, in the front of it so we're going to start with our uh, basic kind of DPS build that I run for the, the first phase uh, with just the ads. To start with the specialization, we always run the uh, Demolitionist. We run the Demolitionist because of the mortar rounds mainly. Um, this specialization allows you to ignore one explosion every minute. So if you do get kind of caught off guard and you get hit by one of those mortars, this is going to save you. Um, really does help a lot. Um, next, I run the Eagle Bear. Um, you know, fell in love with it after you know getting it with uh, Dark Hours. Haven't changed away from it. It's super strong, super accurate. Um, you know, tenacity buff allows me to face tank a little bit more. If anybody has watched my gameplays, that is my uh, deal. I, I face tank way too much, gets me into trouble. Um, but this helps me out. So tenacity. Uh, buff is great. Accuracy also increases uh, as you continuously fire. Um, that's fantastic. So yeah, at long range, you can really beam those guys uh, across the across the map, which is super helpful. Um, and then just a standard uh, CQB. I don't use the M1A Classic just because I think it fires too slow. I like to be able to kind of rapid fire. So I use the CQB with Boomerang um, to get that added uh, damage increase. Next, uh, the Coyote's Mask. So taking uh, advantage of the Pack Instinct buff um, right there. Pretty straightforward. Nothing crazy. Um, you know, we always have threes on our team at any given boss fight. Um, so I run this in the beginning just because uh, it allows me to have less uh, less spots in my loadout. Uh, my loadout was currently full with every build, so I can't do any more. So this just allows me to have this. So... Um, chest piece, I use a little obliterate. You can use glass cannon here. Um, I have a kind of a different glass cannon setup that I use on the first boss, which we'll get into shortly. Um, but I use obliterate. Um, again, I have a face tanking problem. It's a, it's a serious thing. So I use obliterate, so I don't kill myself a lot. Um, Providence, uh, holster, pretty straightforward. All reds, nothing crazy. Um, backpack with Vigilance, obviously taking advantage of that 25% boost. Um, Providence again, so we're taking taking um, advantage of the three-piece Providence buff, the headshot damage, crit chance, and the crit damage. The Grupo gloves, again, getting more crit damage out. Max roll, there, God roll, I love these gloves. And then uh, a Fenris knee pad, again, Max roll, God roll. Um, again, just buffing that with the 10% of soul rifle damage. Uh, going to the the skills, again, straightforward revive hive in case I get myself into trouble, and healing drone, just in case, again, if I get myself into trouble. Nothing crazy. Sidearm doesn't really matter. Uh, grenade doesn't matter. Um, but, yeah, so let's look at stats. Stats, 38% uh, crit chance. You know, max is 60, I know, but the mask is going to do the rest of the work for me right so myself and two others are wearing the mask at all times so that is going to be maxed out at 60 percent almost all the time uh and then 192.9 percent crit hit damage that could probably be a little bit higher uh but you know it, it's fine just where it is and again getting that buff from the mask is going to help push that way over 200 percent crit damage which really helps me to uh burst damage um uh bad guys um uh, the rest is pretty stra straightforward, nothing crazy. The actual boss build, which is the glass cannon build. 
very similar to the last one, but just a few minor changes. We still go with the demolition and specialization. Uh, first change is we switch to the pestilence. Uh, I'm not sure if this is a wide known thing yet, but pestilence is fantastic for this boss. We take advantage of the plague of the outcast, which uh, debuff, which hits apply a debuff dealing 100% weapon damage over 10 seconds. This stacks up to 50 times. Whenever an enemy dies with this debuff, all stacks are transferred to a nearby enemy within 25 meters. So what this allows us to do is we target those shield guys that come out, right? We get one down. That buff, that debuff will then switch to one of the other shield guys and so on. It gets goes then to the next shield guy and then to the boss, which allows us to get the boss and those shield guys down that much quicker, do that much more damage to them. So this is a great option. We have we have about three to four of these on the team. Not the whole team run them, about three to four. Um, and then the, the rest of the team uses M1As and, and Eagle Bears and stuff like this. We have a good mix of damage, whether it's sustained damage with the, with the Pestilences or burst damage using the ARs and the M1As. The backup is the Burnout. Again, not very important. I'd never use this. It's just a placeholder. Uh, the Sidearm, again, never use it. just a placeholder. First thing is we are taking advantage of the three-piece Providence. Again, very straightforward uh, with this Providence mask. All red rolls, pretty decent rolls on it. Um, we're not running the Coyotes this time because we have three other people that run the Coyotes in this fight. Um, so we don't. I don't need to worry about it. I switched to this so I can run the... Uh, you know, the glass cannon LMG build, right? So, uh, chest piece, like we just said, glass cannon, perfect glass cannon. Uh, the sacrifice, um, chest piece, all damage you deal is amplified by 30%, all damage you take is amplified by 60%. We have two people that are designated for ad control, so the ad, and we have them placed in strategic spots so that the ads spawn at the back of the area back of the map instead of spawning on us so you don't really need to worry about the ads one or two might trickle through but usually the team see them and we know the top prioritize them so you're not taking damage by ads the main thing you might take damage from is either the shield guys the boss or mortars so it's really the only thing you need to worry about so don't worry about that added 60 percent it'll be okay play smart you'll be fine uh, the Walker and Harris holster here, great rolls. You know, I rolled the headshot damage there instead of the crit damage because I already had it. If I remember correctly, there was a blue roll there, and I had to get that off. So uh, we rolled the headshot damage in just to help us out a little bit. Uh, Petrov, just to amplify that LMG damage by 10%. All red rolls, great. I would love to see the weapon damage up at that 50% mark, but I'll find a new pair eventually. Same group of gloves, nothing different here. Maxwell God roll, great. Uh, and then the Providence backpack with Vigilance, same backpack as before, nothing crazy. Uh, very straightforward. Um, but yeah, that's the build. Let's check out, oh, so let's do skills. Skills, we use the Assault Turret uh, instead of the Heal Drone. This fight is over quick. I, I don't even have time to heal myself. And if I do, I'm using a med kit anyways. I need to be healed quickly. So I used the turret to help us give us that much more damage. Uh, we placed it in the boss spawn area, which then allows them to have perfect sight on the shield guys at their backs so or doing damage the whole time. We have about three or four people run these. It just helps us get that little bit of boost to the damage. Again, getting those shield guys down that much quicker and getting that boss down that much quicker. Revive Hive in case I get myself in trouble. Very straightforward. Stats on this guy. Um, 40% crit chance. Very straightforward, right? The the masks are going to do the rest of the work for me to get to me to that 60%. And then 176.6% crit damage. That could be higher, sure. But again, the mask is going to do the rest of the work for me. I think anywhere in the realm of like 150 to 200% is, is just fine here. Uh, you know, you're gonna you're hitting like a truck anyways. Um, so just you know, anywhere 150 to 1 200, you're fine. Uh, the mask again gonna buff you about 25% more anyways. The rest of this is all very straightforward. So we're gonna get right into the gameplay. Check it out. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, if you like what you see, please like, subscribe, ring that bell for more content for myself, and we'll be back tomorrow with another build for uh, Boss Two Pfizer. We're gonna talk about the uh, the control room and then the other positions within the fight as well but i'll see you again next time thank you very much
technician named Zach Young called us from a nearby foundry. The true sons took over a couple days ago, <laughs> but he managed to escape. Nope, he just start shooting. No, nope, don't mind me. I'll try to get a hold of him while you All investigate right. the site. Uh, let's make sure I get the right build on. Sorry. Yeah, there we go. Alright, let's do it. I'm ready. Hey, Caitlin, what's going on, man? That's about right. <laughs> First time. Uh, yeah, blue is regular, regular tonight. I think there's three of us getting regular tonight. Uh, yeah, there's also uh, TJ going for the ravenous run. Oh, we don't need we don't need cookies. Fantastic. Cookie bears. Look out. It's amazing that guy in the turret can hit every single person. Right. In that. Um, amazing, and it doesn't overheat either. Oh man, right. he's so he's so talented. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! No, yeah. Well, wipe. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'll ever forget the time when I was like, look out for the rushers, and then Sifter goes immediately down from the rushers, and Jump was like, Sifter, rushers. <laughs> it will be forever ingrained in this raid for me, I think. It was so funny. So funny. I'm lucky that he doesn't sit to humor like that. People probably would never play with me again. Yeah, yeah I popped cool. his bag. That's all you know. Get him. This freaking shotgun hurts. Far. Hey, pesty Kamatin, pants. what's going on? Pesty pants. Got my pesty pants. <laughs> what's up, Kaylin? What's up? Let me switch my build in one second. Thank you. Hey. Everyone ready? Ready. Uh... Hitting the button. Gentlemen, time to start teach your end. Right, Whoa, they like sprinted out. They didn't back up. That was weird. All right, get I ready for boss. Boss, boss. Try to come down on you, Teddy, you're trying to get shot on her. <laughs> Teddy, are you in your yeah. hiding spot? Shh. Uh, shoe guy, shoe guy.
cost. Yeah, I'm seeing him. This is real fast. Oh, shield guy. Shield, shield. That was close. Yeah, I got him. There's a guy like that Just back here. Alright, you're ready for boss. Boss. Uh, oh! Nice! Uh, oh, that's a revolver piece. 